Okay, we're ready to get this party started. Hi, everybody. How you doing today? Yeah, just as good as my top is. Perfect. My name is Gito. I will be your host today for our fun panel brought to you by Creatively and Cultured Magazine. Um, Shouts out to them. <clears throat> I mean, that's, you could clap for that. I feel like, yeah, we're really excited to be here for them. <clears throat> and we are talking to some amazing creatives, hand-picked creatives who have done some amazing collaborations with some world-renowned artists. So we're so happy to have you guys here with us today. Maybe I should do a little intro moment. I'm really excited about this. <clears throat> Okay, so to my right, we have Tash Pakwari, Virginia and New Jersey based. Okay, let me read this because, you know, Tash does a lot. <clears throat> Music, video producer, writer, art director, and co-founder of music production trio Very Rare. He has worked with people like ASAP Rocky, Jesus and Mero, and is the art director and creative consultant of affiliation. Make some noise. All right. <laughs> I did so good with that, Tash. Like, I saw that. Thank you, thank you. In the middle, we have Ashley Simone, my girl. Hey, girl. <clears throat> the co-founder and co-creative director for Asha, a New York-based accessory design label rooted in travel, cultural awareness, and the act of unifying style and utility. She's also a partner and executive producer of Equator Productions, a creative studio development work at the intersection of film, art, and advertising with her new hubby. Hey, girl. I am doing so good. Okay. And third, we have Shomi Patwari. Yes, the last name match. We'll get into that later. Um, Bangladesh-born, but Virginia boy, filmmaker, um, an amazing creative who has worked with people like ASAP Rocky, The Weeknd, Diplo, Mark Ronson. You, you saw the real, you know the vibe. Also the co-creator of his own creative company called Elusive Media. Shouts out to Show Me. They didn't get my reel, but check my Instagram. I do things as well. <clears throat> okay, so I guess we should get this started, right? <clears throat> get to the questions page all right so this question is for all the panelists and first things first i'm just gonna let y'all know this is gonna be way more of a conversation like i'm not really like this like it's very like this so just bear with me if it doesn't feel as professional as you thought it would be um okay so this is for everybody um what does it mean to you to be a part of creatively culture and this whole experience just jump at it, anybody go, because I'm not picking. We having a conversation. Um, I mean, it's a you know, uh, honor and privilege to be part of all of this. I mean, especially like around Fashion Week. Like, I'm not the most fashionable guy, but I've been fortunate enough to like have mentors like Pharrell and have you know partnered with Rocky and all those guys, who I feel like have played a big you know role in the culture and fashion. So, um. You know, it's an honor to be part of this, and I'm looking forward to networking with everybody because it's like I could just sense the creative vibe here. You know, it's dope. I think my jacket just fell. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll sure. second that. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, as an entrepreneur, you spend a lot of your time working in a silo, and thinking of things and dreaming of things and then putting it out to the world and not knowing what anybody's going to say. So I appreciate the, the acknowledgement. <laughs> um, I work hard. Okay. <laughs> Thank you first for uh, letting me also uh, speak on this panel. Um, to me, I love uh, creatively and stuff like this platform because people like me who are pretty, uh, you know, do many different type of things. So I can kind of like showcase that and network with other people too. And you know, you can wear many hats, you know, you don't have to just stick to one thing. And some one thing might lead to another. And that's basically what I did from like music to video to even now being an art director. Currently I'm actually doing marketing for um, affiliation. So even with TikTok, you gotta keep up with all the trends and stuff. So thank you again. 
Um, I think it's interesting that both you and Shomi talked about networking at an event about collaboration that you're at. Like, you're trying to even network at the event about collaboration, which is pretty interesting because I think this is what it's all about. But um, do you guys want to tell me a bit about your creative practice and how collaboration is a part of that? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I mean... <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> Most of my career has been very collaborative. Like, you know, a lot of times when we do a music video with Rocky or Ferg, they'd be like co directed by Rocky or co directed mm -hmm. by Ferg. And a lot of people try to dismiss them, like, oh, they just want the clout to like. Well, tell us, is that yeah. true? Because I want to know. Like, no, are, no, they, are they in the directorship for real? Like... No, they are. Because uh, part of the collaborative. No, no, I'm glad because this is like stuff nobody wants to talk about. But they actually do bring something so different to the table because I didn't grow up in Harlem, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know the block. I don't know, like, yeah. the friends and everybody they grew up with. So, you know, to give them that credit, like, they're, you know, painting the canvas with us when it comes to, like, you know, dreaming up in these worlds. And, you know, with the collaboration stuff, it's, it's, it's cool because I'm influencing them. They're influencing me. Like, when I first met Ferg, you know, he had never seen like certain movies from like Jodowski or, mm -hmm. you know, Tarsem. So I would show him like cool shit. And, you know, I don't know if we're all the curse, but, um, you know, yeah, and he would send me can. stuff like, you know, like we're uh, it's a cultural exchange, you know. And so um, I think that's the fun part is like when you're brainstorming together and and it's it's always I, I've always been a very communal director as well. So it's just like. I like to collaborate. A lot of people have that ego where they're like, oh man, I can't believe you're like sharing your credit with somebody. I'm like, why not? Like, yeah. we're, we're making this happen together. So, you know, and now you've got these platforms that make it even easier to like, you know, come find, you know, each other to work with. So, you know, it's exciting times. Yeah, I mean, I would say that community is everything. Um, and Filmmaking is a collaborative sport. Like, no one does it by themselves. I mean, unless you just have a camera and you're shooting something by yourself. But um, <laughs> in, most, in most of the projects that you'll see from folks, and it just for clarity, like, I'm a designer, um, and I also executive produce, so I, like, live two separate lives. But I think that they really complement and um, contribute to one another because I've learned how to lean on my community to uh, achieve things. And have had the great fortune of also working at the intersection of both industries and supporting other designers with their like dreams in terms of like fashion films and um, you know bringing their vision to life and I don't know I just think it's like reaching across and really um, finding folks who are aligned with you ethically um, creatively um, is really important because I just, I just don't believe it. I don't believe we're here to be alone and do everything alone. I think that we're here to, um, to contribute to each other's like lives and visions. So, yeah, I mean, collaboration is is everything in what we do. And um, yeah, I'll just say that I think filmmaking is a collaborative sport. Um, I agree. Also, everything I've ever done creatively was always collaborative. I was part of a three-man group with a very rare. And our process was always trying to be fun, basically to like jam out. Whether we were working with Ferg at the time, he'd have some crazy theme like, can you make some jungle sounds? And it can't just be all up to me. So I always needed help with whatever I did, because I, I obviously don't want to take all the credit. I think part of being a creative is a bunch of talent put together and then putting one big thing out there. And even working with my brother also. So. I would do some. I would do um, more of the sounds, and he would do the visuals. So, my whole creative process is definitely just always collabing and keeping the ego at the door. So, everyone's talented at the end of the day. Can you tell us more what you mean by you at three man group? Like you and two assistants, or you <laughs> like all you guys were collectively doing this? You had the same role. What would how did that, how did that very rare structure go? Um. It was actually so funny. The, uh, the way we actually started as a group, one day I just woke up and I was like, I'm gonna go to Guitar Center and randomly just spent like $3,000 on a bunch of equipment. I never knew how to use it. I used to always watch my brother make beats. And at the same time, this is around like 2011, so ASAP Rocky just dropped. My brother put me on. I remember he just waking me up out of my sleep, like, yo, you gotta check these guys out. They dress like you. They wear gold teeth and streetwear. <laughs> 
Because uh, for me, being from the South, gold teeth was just what it was. My mother was also a jeweler, so she made jewelry molds, all kinds of stuff. It was just kind of Southern culture. But to see that from New York, it was just so new to me. And I was like, yeah, somehow I got to work with these guys. I didn't know how to make beats at first, but I had to learn quick. So I needed help. I got two other people. We built the studio out of a um, shed. Not a shed, actually a storage unit. We put all of our equipment together, and if I wasn't good at one thing, someone else was. If I had, it could be like I would pick a sample, the other guy would chop the sample up, and then I would do the drums back and forth. So a lot of our beats that we did in the beginning were all like 100% collaborative. Okay. Um, I also like the cards. I'm having a conversation, so I just moved my third card to the middle because. <laughs> Ashley said something earlier that I want to talk to you about. You were talking about working with both your brand and then the production side of things. Can you talk about like what's the difference when you're approaching that with collaborations? Or like are you approaching that differently when it comes to the two separate? Yeah, I mean, because the design process is really rooted in um, so I have a I have a partner. We share the business, we are creative collaborators, co-creative directors of the brand, and a lot of what's coming from Aja is coming from our brains. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really rooted in us wanting to explore our heritage and, and build something that has longevity. Um, it's a travel accessories brand, okay. and I think the collaboration with the brand um, it's very different than the collaboration and production um, because... Yeah, why? Yeah, yeah why? They're, ju <laughs> <laughs> they're just entirely different businesses. Um, with the brand, you know, we're making a product to sell. Mm -hmm. You know, with our production company, we're like sharing ideas to sell. Right. You know, it's a very different model. We're providing a service with our production company as opposed to selling a product. And so, um, you know, the collaboration on the brand side oftentimes is very, like, logistical and, like, you know, in terms of working with, you know, designers and, um, you know, manufacturers and, and things like that. It's very logistical, but on the production side, it's highly emotional. <laughs> um, I think that obviously like there's uh, logistics that come into play like when you're putting together any type of production, whether it's music, whether it's film. Um, but because, you know, with the work that we do, it's creatively led and you have to collaborate so much before the final product comes out. Yeah. It's very emotion led which is why I think it's super important, um, the, the environments that you create, like when you're um, building production teams mm -hmm. and your discernment and choosing your collaborators because uh, your energy exchange with people is gonna determine the outcome of your projects. Um, so, I don't know, I feel like we have a little bit more control at Aja. Which I think you might like more. <laughs> I think you might like that side more. No. I'm making things up. Really? No, I don't. Okay. Um, you said you like the structure on the other side. I love them both. I okay. mean, I think it's kind of no, hard. Yeah. It's hard to choose. I love them both okay. for different reasons. Like, um, you know, with the brand, it feels more like, you know, like like if a painter is, is painting a piece of art and then you get to share that finished work with the world right. without having too much input. Right. With production, you know, because, you know, on one side we might be creative directing a project and we have full creative vision. On the other side, we're working with a brand who already has a vision and guidelines and things that they need to come across. And so it's this, this dance almost of, you know, here's my idea, well, that's your idea. And we're gonna find a groove and we're gonna figure it out together and we're gonna make something really beautiful that speaks to both of our, both of our brands and both of our vision because we, you know, we don't just wanna work with anybody, but I like that dance. Yeah. I also like to be that like weird artist in the studio making my shit and then it's like well hope you like it yeah that also feels very <laughs> creative that dance you know what yeah. i'm saying that feels very creative collaboration what we're talking about um show me you talked about this earlier about like respecting the artists and like they actually are directing um so i guess tash i can act, i can ask you how is it working with artists how is it collabing with them how much do you respect and how much are you like listen <laughs> stay in your lane <clears throat> 
or just anybody, not even an artist. I know you work with a lot of different people. In the beginning, when we first started making music, it was so fun because we were very naive at the time. So I thought, like, if I make a song, if I get on an album, I'm going to be a millionaire. That one number one record is going to take me out of here. So we just had these dreams. So when we had these dreams, we would just try to make the best things possible. And to me, it's, um, it's just you got to love the process at the end of the day. Um, it's, it's really, um, I guess you can say it's like almost magical the way, way, the way everything has to work together. And I'm, a, I'm definitely a vibes person, okay. you know, so I, don't, I wouldn't just work with anybody, you know. So I, I was lucky enough to work with the people I wanted to work with, and the, I just stuck with it. Like, even in the beginning, I didn't make any beats for nobody but ASAP at the, at, at, in the beginning. And then they would get me different um, features and stuff like that. So then you end up working with like one person leads to another, and that's how I ended up working with uh, Santi Gold. And even in that uh, session, then we worked with her. I love that you said her name right too, because you can't say Santi. It is Santi Gold. Go on. <clears throat> so so even even and even when we worked on her album, we still had six producers on one beat. Okay. Like. Um, it was, it was me, uh, Vampire Weekend, Doc McKinney, who did all of the weekend stuff. They would literally probably do like a key. Then we would do the drums. And then I remember just being in the studio. That's when it kind of felt like work. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, because we were in the studio for like three days straight, 4, 4 p.m. to 4 a.m., same loop over and over again. And that's when you kind of like, I was like, all right, Rock Nation is flying us out to work. Then it felt like work. But in the beginning, it was way different. Um, I heard you say earlier that you were lucky enough to work with people that you wanted to. Do you think that's good advice to only work with people that you want to, or should you do those jobs where you're like, listen, rent is due? No, 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 no. no. Always, we all got to survive at the end of the okay. day. Okay, okay. But no, the, ones I that I, the ones that I did, those are the ones I'm going to promote. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's I that's, that's going on. That's going on the gram. I'm going to put it on Twitter. You know what I mean? Put it on Facebook. Okay. Some of the other stuff, you know, you kind of put in the top. You, that might go the on the pocket. story for 24 hours. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, get the bag. Always. Uh, um, cute. Okay, yeah. Okay, agree. Um, right. If y'all haven't realized yet, show me and Tasha are brothers. Um, and that kind of feels like the epitome of collaboration. How has that been? Brothers who didn't want to sit next to each other. Right, like <laughs> that already. We're, like, I mean, we're seven years apart. You know, growing up in Virginia Beach, neither of us were like thinking we're going to be in some sort of entertainment industry. It wasn't until like we found out like, oh, Pharrell's from our hometown. And wow. I didn't even really know that until Tash was like, you know, this dude's from Virginia Beach. So I was immediate. So it's funny. He was a bigger fan of a lot of the people that I ended up working with. And so that was crazy because he would do all the research. He's like, yo, go find this guy over there. Do this over here. He's just like a young kid on the internet like telling me this is their whole roster. Go find one of them, right? And so he was putting me on, even though he's the younger brother. And it was funny because um, we weren't going to collaborate for like a decade later, you know? But in the beginning, you know, seven years apart, I'm bringing him to the studio with Pharrell. And they're like making Mr. Me Too with the clips. And my brother was just like soaking it all in, you know? So yeah. I, it was a unique thing, you know? But the other thing is, I think I'm here because of this relationship. Because when the Pharrell thing for us, like Pharrell had moved to Miami, uh, Push at the time was in a transition period, like the clips kind of broke up. I was like, I don't have anything here anymore. So when I moved to New York, um, you know, he had linked me up with Rocky and Ferg. So that was a new life for me because the first 10 years of my life, I'm following everything Star Trek is doing. And we were not even a, a video production company. We were a, a web design company and a graphic design company. So we were designing websites for BBC Ice Cream's collaboration with Pepsi and you know just like different fashion brands and things like that. So it was a different um, world, but he was always around the music and he absorbed a lot of that. And he kind of had the studio etiquette by being, you know, right. there with me. So I think that helped him out later when he had his shot. So, like, the collaborative process really, really started happening, for example, when um, 
you know, he had produced uh, Hood Pope for ASAP Ferg, and then they needed somebody to do the video. So I said, this is what we're going to do. You're going to produce those records. I'm going to go approach them on the video. We'll hook them up, <laughs> the Patwari brothers. So, you know, that, that's just kind of how he did it. And then, I mean, you know, like early on, we all had to, because we're brothers, we're family. I mean, Gito's family too, I'm not going to lie. Because, you know, when we first started out, Tash would, you know, help cast a little bit, but then Gito was casting all the around the way girls that he was around. You know, Gito was partying at these raves and yes. bringing them to our sets. So we all actually came up together, which is crazy because I didn't know he was going to be the one hosting this panel, but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, that, that worked out. It makes me less nervous. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we never really had sibling rivalry. Yeah, I'm about to say, so no, no arguments? Like... Oh, no, we argue. And we disagree a lot. Chris. Okay. But we know that there has to be a balance because he's made the transition from music to art direction. Mm -hmm. And that happened again in a similar process. He was around me where I was filming and doing interactive design for, you know, for Elle's label and a few other local clients at the time. And then when we moved to New York, you know, even though he would produce the record, for example, he's a much more people pleaser and social person than I am. Um, He's shy in front of everybody else, but like when it comes to like one-on-one -on -one conversations, he's great at that. So what would happen is I'd be on set with Future, and somehow he's the one that's talking to Future, and they're getting along. Like, you know, while I'm just like, hey, man, uh, you know, like you're, you, it's time to shoot the scene. I'm the annoying guy, like sending my AD out there to like put things together. Here he is in Future just smoking a blunt in the back <laughs> in the VIP. I'm like, what is going on? Very true. And then, <laughs> so... You know, he has a very unique way of collaborating and bringing projects to life for us. Um, there are a lot of people that he had actually brought to my life because early on we planted the seeds. You know, like in the beginning, nobody trusted us to do commercial projects. You know, quote unquote. I, I want to add to that. Yeah. Don't think it was easy though because we're <laughs> yeah, seven years apart. Us. So before, while he was all, by the time, I want to say around 2011 is when I stepped in, but before then, I had to prove to him that it, just because he was my older brother, you know, he was like, I think I had to, my first song I made, I made with a random guy, but it was on allhiphop.com. And I think that's when he took me seriously. Wow. Yeah. Because my mean, dad wanted would me to be to. an accountant. Yeah. And he already my, did the creative thing. And my dad wanted me to be a computer, you know, programmer. My degree's not even in film. It's, so we both had to like kind of so kick in the door. So we both went through a similar thing, obviously, seven years apart. Parents still didn't know who. Pharrell was till he got a Grammy and like my dad didn't take us yeah like, push him my mom to didn't our house, take seriously you know too. and my parents like yeah I don't know who these guys are you know so like they didn't care till like, we take would off your show shoes, them our, yeah, yeah or, you know, exactly yeah. like yeah make sure they just take off their shoes you know like they're Asian parents so <laughs> or I'd have to go to Target and be like hey look mom this is the album I produced on <laughs> like literally the physical copy but the collaborative thing was also not just creative it was like having to like big each other up to our parents to be like this means something like yo he's on exactly. like when when they got picked uh uh complex magazines producers top 10 producers of the years next to um who was metro it boom. metro boom and all those guys at the time i was trying to explain to my parents like this is a big deal you know but south asian parents are like uh, let's just see when the checks come in and luckily, exactly hey, you know it wasn't until the commercial projects uh, you know that we started like really seeing checks so you know, that's the other thing, you know, the Ali Oop was like, you know, when Tuan, his very close collaborator of, uh, collaborator of Gito's, I produced a Volvo commercial for Tuan that he directed and, you know, Gito helps out. Gito wore several hats as well, not just, you know, he was ADing for us, all kinds yes. of things. But, yes. um, for example, we didn't have a beat at the time and we went to Tash. He produced the beat for the Volvo thing. And then when you saw the Kylie Jenner Murakami project we did, he, you know, he did the beat for that. So it's great to be able to bring home, like, the money to, like, the family and keep it in the circle. And, you know, so it's a unique, rare situation. So I'm really grateful for that. Yeah, no, that sounds fab. I should have had a brother. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it didn't come easy. I didn't just, like, yo, he had yeah. to prove to me. Because a lot of people, he gets this all the time. Because we're seven years apart, I was already working with some A-listers at the time. They were like, oh, Tash, you got it easy because, like, you're his brother. He's just plugging you in with mm -hmm. these producers. I'm like, actually, quite the opposite. He's actually hooking me up with, like, the next relevant artist, you know? So... You know, it, it, even when I did the music thing, he was like, "Yeah, that's cool. Like, keep going to school." You know what I mean? But the, yeah, yeah. finally, I was like, "Hey, I think I got a song with Rocky." He was like, "Hold on, we're, let's, let's, 
get out of school. Yeah, yeah. He was like, I think you need a lawyer for this one, so you would help me out. Um, Ashley, um, yeah, hey girl. Um, you were telling me a bit about your, por- your partner Moya earlier at Asha. How was that creative process? And I also want to know, like, because your brand is really rooted in culture, and I want to know how that is affected within the creative process, working and doing all that. <laughs> you want me to follow up on it? No, like, it's that Rocky. Pharrell. Well, I didn't bring up Michael Kors yet, but if you want to, I can. <laughs> okay. Um, no, but I do want to know more about you and working with your partner and how that is on more of a cultural, um, a cultural aspect. Um, well, I'm African American. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. originally. Um, fun fact about me. And Moya, she's Jamaican. Um, Work. Okay, cool. (laughs) Um, We actually met in college and became really good friends. And the brand was um, dreamed up while we started traveling together. Um, And, you know, I think for us, we always want to create with intention. We didn't want to start a brand just because um, and found at the time that there was a void for what we were looking for in bags. And so created a brand that was rooted in travel, but then also the experiences that were inspiring us um, by way of our travels. I think after a few years of you know uh, going to different places and searching for inspiration for the brand, we really you know, felt clear about wanting to create a heritage brand. And I think when you think about heritage, it's often rooted in the stories of the founders. Mm -hmm. And so that's really um, kind of what had made us like shift our focus to to our, our heritage and our histories. I think there's so much intersection across the black diaspora. And, you know, for us, it's important that there's representation of our communities in not only just like the fashion industry, but also the luxury space. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I I think that what's interesting, and this has been a point of conversation lately, is that, you know, when you put uh, a lot of brown folks in in your products, people think that you're only marketing to black and brown folks. And it's like, no, that's for everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, you can enjoy this no matter where you come from, what cultural background you have. you know, social economic, well, maybe not every social economic because the bags are kind of expensive, but I know that's right. <laughs> but you know, everybody can enjoy the products, but I think it's important um, that you know we have a brand that's as old as a as a Louis Vuitton or like a Ramoa or you know these heritage brands these primarily European heritage brand because often you're not finding many American heritage brands because it's still a young country, but that there are heritage brands that are rooted in um, black and brown cultures that are widely recognized. So we're still in our infant phase, Mm -hmm. you know? I don't think you really become heritage like 100 years old. Um, But yeah, I think it's important that we root the brand in, in our history as black women. Yeah, okay. Um, no, I think that's really important too, and I think that it's. I think it's really cool that you get to tell. And I don't know if this is. I don't want to say my age out too crazy, but I don't know if this is new. But I love that. Like now, the story behind the designers are just as important as the actual designs. And I love that you get to actually like tell your true story and culture and bring that to luxury. Mm-hmm. Is over. Like that's so fab. Um, show me. What do you know now that you wish you knew at the start of your career? Oh, I mean, everything we learned was from a mistake. So um, one of the biggest things in the beginning of my career was like the trust, the trust issue, because it's like when you're doing everything on your own, it was very hard to cross that bridge of like delegating the work. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if I had done that earlier, you know, like we would have gotten the bag earlier. But, uh, you know, like in the beginning, I didn't realize that till I started going on sets and I'm just like, all right, like I don't need to be the editor, the colorist, the VFX, because I didn't go to film school. Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize what we're now preaching is the collaborative process. So just being free to collaborate, you know, like you gotta trust people. You gotta let somebody else do that part 
that they're best at, you know? Mm -hmm. I think some of the best directors surround themselves with people that's better than them, more talented than them. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you've got a DP, a director of photography is more talented than you are, you're gonna shine because like everybody else is so good, like, you know, you can, mm -hmm. you can really shine. So that's one of the things for me is like earlier that I wish I could have like easily, but you know what? Not to name drop the platform creatively, like you've got a app like that nowadays mm -hmm. where you could easily find people. Right. You know, you've got so many apps now where you can find um, the talent online. So that's the other thing. Like being in Virginia, there's a few folks that we trusted yeah. to work with. But now, like with all the apps out there, like it's so much easier to be able to say, okay, I see this guy's portfolio here. I trust him. Oh yeah, like this this person's perfect for the job. So like yeah, like. Being able to delegate is one of the biggest things. I still have issues with it sometimes. Try to be, uh, you know, hands off as much as possible. But, you know, I got better with it as, as time's gone by, and it's, it's helped big time. That's interesting that you brought up um, creatively in that platform because the next question I had for you was like, how do you cultivate strong relationships with the client? So like, how do you meet somebody there, work with them, and then like continue? You know what I'm saying? Well, for us, like the first project, we never think about the budget. We're just kind of investing. Wait, That's okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I know, no. That was great. Say, say that one more time. All right, so for example, like when we worked with uh, Gentle Monster, uh huh. Um, they gave us a pretty hefty budget, but I knew this was pre LVMH investment. Right, okay, I and, see what you're saying. You know, when we did that project, I just said, this is my time to shine. and. You know, rest in peace, Michael K. Williams. He was in our campaign, and all these cool people were on the campaign. And the thing is, it paid off because all the people you brought on set and just invested in making sure, like, you have the best talent, and it wasn't just a money grab situation, you know? Um, like, that pays off because then the client's like, and sometimes even the smallest budget, you just put it all into the project because then the client's like, okay, I gave him like 100,000, but it looks like a million dollar project. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not to disclose any budget, but the Gentle Monster project was like half no, a million. It. No, disclose it. This it was a like a half a million, which isn't much in the fashion uh -huh. world. It was uh -huh. a half a million, but we uh -huh. shot for four days right. with like top tier A-lister talent and it paid off. Like after that, like not only did I get to show like, okay, well my stuff is not just like, one look like I can do all this other stuff I'm truly inspired by so I use that moment to work with the gentle monster to like you humbled really, yourself a little yeah yeah just wow. like put it into the work you know like so I would say you know like invest back into your initial projects and the client's gonna come back we did that with almost every you know we do that with every client and it always pays off you know yeah um okay I could try that humbling <laughs> <laughs> Um, Tash and Ashley, um, are there boundaries to the creative collaborations that you do? Like, how do you work past, like, limitations? Like, wh what do you say? You know what I'm saying? Where are you drawing the line? Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's always boundaries. I was listening to a podcast today that's talking about, like, setting boundaries as a form of self-love, and I think that is wow. very important. Mm -hmm. um, but with collaboration, I mean, I think... The only time it becomes difficult is when you don't define what everybody's doing. You know, like when folks come into the come into a project and don't really know what's being asked of them, then there's all this overlap and confusion and you know, everybody's got their hands in a pot that they shouldn't be in. I think as long as you go into something with clarity, it's easy to create boundaries and I think, you know, that's one of the biggest things that is important for me as an EP, like um making sure that at the beginning of of a project, everybody's really clear on, on what they're doing and what their expectations are, I guess. And I, I appreciate that you're sharing budgets because I think that people don't talk about that enough. Um, don't talk about the actual dollars that go behind mm -hmm. like creating things. And we didn't, for Equator, we didn't start um, with music and um, music videos. We've always kind of been, you know, working on getting our footing in a commercial space. And, um, you know, in, there's just so many things that need to happen, 
you know, when you're working on commercial jobs and then you also have a brand mm -hmm. the same way that you might have an artist or something like that that you have to deliver for, you know, you're, you're being paid to do something. You're being paid to deliver something. So it's not, you know, just an art project where you can just, you know, go crazy and, and maybe not deliver on it. You, you know, someone is trusting in you to accomplish something collaboratively. And so, you know, it's really important to, you know, set your goals and then also make sure that everybody's really clear on, on what they're doing. Um, yeah, so send the call sheet early. <laughs> send the so call they know sheet. the roles. Send the call okay. sheet. But having lots of meetings, like I think mm -hmm. there's nothing that can replace a lot of FaceTime with people right. and conversation. Um, I think that's also just a part of trust building with okay. your client and also your collaborators because not only do you have to convince your client that you can be trusted to spend their money properly and also deliver something that's beautiful, but then you've got to get everybody on set to trust you too, that like you can be the leader that they need in order to get the project done, whether it's the production assistant or if it's the director who's going to need a lot of support and a boundary set for them so that they can be creative, creatively led like on set instead of being bogged down by maybe a client that thinks who wants to be a director and they on their ear the whole time you know like as it as as like <laughs> i'm sure you've experienced oh, yeah. stuff like that before oh, yeah. too where you know but there's a way to manage that and also you know make a client feel comfortable in that they're being heard but when you had a goal and you were really clear about that goal and you carried them along on the process leading up to like your shoot day and the production, post-production and stuff like that, then it's kind of easier to set boundaries. So I'm, I'm big on, on conversation. I, I'll call myself a fairy godmother of my productions. Word. I make everybody feel really chill and calm and overshare sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, but to the point where like they, they feel confident in our abilities. Yeah. Work. I love that. I need... Plenty of fairy guys in my life. Um, Tash, what's your boundaries given? Um, when it comes to production, <laughs> definitely. I would Sorry, Tash, tell us more about the boundaries when it comes to <laughs> collaboration and production and creativity, please. To me, I think on set and stuff, um, over communication. Know exactly what the director wants. Because as an art director, my creativity comes in by executing his goal. So the boundary is, isn't if he says make you know this, I'm gonna execute execute the best way I can, make it look the best way, but not do my own twist to anything. So that boundary has to be there because, like you said, you're being hired. You have to execute what it is, <laughs> and basically that. But far as when I did music, I can be as creative as I want. I'm making the beat, but if I'm hired under somebody, especially as my, with my brother, he's he's the director. So I listen to what the director wants. You know what I mean? And then my creativity comes in just by making it look the best. Yeah. Um, this wasn't on the card, but I want to know, how do y'all feel about clients on set? Because we're talking about collaboration, <laughs> and I'm talking to the people behind the scenes. How do we feel about the client on set in that collaboration while you're making your magic and doing your art? How does, how does that feel? What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> pulling out the truth. Why yeah, we awesome. almost rapping. <laughs> I need you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think I think you at the end of the day, you know, when, when you were when I was younger, I was, you know, like, oh, this is my vision, this is mm -hmm. all mine. Mm -hmm. Like at that time, like f off, you know, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like let me do my thing. As mm -hmm. you get older and as you meet like the more uh, corporate project, you know, like clients, you're kind of like, yo, this is they're hiring you, okay. you know. It's also their vision, it's their product. Um, so. There are different aspects to the client, right? Mm -hmm. Like, one, you got to set boundaries, right? Don't text me at 1 a.m. and right. <laughs> on a right. weekend and just be like, hey, we need this change tomorrow. Like, that, that you know, like, they, they have to respect each other, right? In the mm -hmm. same way, don't get too cozy with the client either because mm -hmm. kind of, like, turns them off as well because right. you sound, you know, a little desperate, you know? Yeah. So, like, you got you got to know your boundaries with the clients. Um Honestly, one thing that I learned later on, you know, like I said, you make mistakes. It's like sometimes they are giving you all this money and the client isn't like the owner of the brand, right? They work a nine yes. to five job. Yes. They want to have some good catering. Okay. <laughs> so like, <laughs> yo, so like you can't all be like, all right, we're going to spend like most of our money on production gear and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Client is coming in there. It's raining outside. You don't have a tent. Right. You don't have umbrellas. Right. Uh, the food is not hot. There's a whole 
because I'm not just a director, I'm also an executive producer and somebody that runs a production company, there's a whole hospitality aspect right. that people don't realize. True. Very so true. We are also in the business of hospitality. Okay. And so that's what people don't realize. Like, if your client's not having a good experience on set, nine out of ten times, they're going to forget how good that project was regardless. They're just going to, like, remember the hell they went through to get it mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Right? So yeah, no crafties. You, and you know, early yeah. on we didn't know much. Like I guess I didn't go to film school, and even film school can't teach you this stuff. Like you just gotta learn by experience. I remember I'm not gonna name the client, but uh, Sony. <laughs> no, 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 it's not their fault. It was my fault. Me and Tuan, which is one of his best friends, me and Tuan, we went out to Atlanta, and we just like spent all this money on gear, and then the client, the video commissioner, came on set. So where's the artist's green room? Is he having lunch with us? This is like. 13 years ago, we didn't know anything. <laughs> we came out of scrappy operations. We're like right. coming out of the arrow when Rocky's eating his bodega sandwich in the van. It didn't matter. Right. All of a sudden, Sony's coming to us because they like our look, our visual. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like, we didn't know how to handle the client. And right. so like, forgot, man, like 80% is the client. Like for them to come back and feel comfortable with the project. Because ultimately there's 50 million directors out there putting out dope stuff. Yeah. But what they experience on set, they're going to talk, you know, like the next day they're going to say, well, you know, somebody on. And the other thing about the client is make sure you have the best people around your crew, because if you've got somebody, some young, hungry kid coming up to the client all of a sudden, like mm -hmm. exchanging phone numbers with them, yeah. like that's crazy, too. Yeah, I got I've mistake. had that happen. And I'm like, yeah. yo, chill out, because yeah. you're everybody you hire on set is representing you. And so they're all like you know, the face, your brand to the client. So you got to make sure you have that talk with your team that, yo, the client, you know, like, take care of them. Be respectful. Okay, Leave any fine. drama that's happening behind the scenes. <laughs> Don't show it to them. You know, like, all mm -hmm. those things. But you learn, you know, like, I, di I didn't come from madman production world, you know? Like, we're also like minorities in this game where we didn't have all the connects of our parents, like, you know, like being in the industry. So like, at least not me, you know, like my parents, immigrants came with $2 in their pockets, like made it work. So, you know, like there's a lot, but you know, like I think the hospitality thing again is so important. I think that's a gem. I think that was actually a gem that you yeah. dropped today um, about the hospitality and thinking just beyond saying thank you in an email. Oh, you know what I'm saying? 100%. Okay, I get it. Um, I'm and it's a small world. Yeah, so I'm like learning. one client, especially the agency, knows 50 other brands. Mm -hmm. You're going to, you, you kind of mess up with that one client. You probably just messed up with 50 other brands that they work with. Right, you know? right. Okay, well, speaking of clients, um, Ashley and Tash, what are the most fulfilling collaborations you ever worked on? <clears throat> um, <laughs> I think, I think um, my most fulfilling anything that I do with Ferg, because like I said, it's always an experience working with him. He goes in the studio, he'll let us write. We're laughing half the time. Wait, yeah. what? Anything I work with ASAP No, not writing Ferg. the rap lyrics. Oh, uh, yeah. okay, hold on. No, no, I no, think no, he was dropping some, more. Maybe he is. Yeah, Sometimes no, let him talk, show me. Hold on, no, he's no, saying. No, 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 no. Sometimes, like, what happened? <laughs> Sometimes, you know, hey, go in there and do this ad lib. Okay. It'll be us. Like, Love that. And there's certain songs, no one will catch it, but he's, like, subbing me. Like, I remember, like, <laughs> I did something real desperate in the studio one time. Like, I was, and then he ends up rapping about it on there. I'm like, are yeah. you talking about me right now? Yeah. So I think just the experience of any time I work with um, him is just fun. You know, like, especially, um, I think when I worked on his, uh, I want to say his second album, he actually came all the way down to Virginia, booked wow. a studio for us. And we just kind of kicked it there for like three weeks, and he let one of my other friends like do ad libs. Like we just would we'll you say out. you guys are friends? Absolutely. <laughs> and Absolutely. that's what I'm saying. Absolutely. And you don't feel that's weird by saying that, right? Like it's okay to be friends with your collaborators. And there's and boundaries bosses. too. Yeah. Like you know, I don't. Right. No. Well, I don't. You know, hit him up. Like, hey, what are you doing? Okay. Knowing he has like. Right. He has a life too, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So You're not asking him about the weather on a random No. Okay, I get he it. He usually just hit me things. up or I'll hit him up and be like, hey, come over. Okay. And we're definitely friends as far as like, you know, we might go out to eat or he'll be like, Hey, let's go somewhere or whatever. And he's mostly like an 
he wants to just, like I said, he's a vibes guy at the end of the day. I'm a vibes guy. If I like your vibe, I can work with you, whether you're big or small. You know what I mean? Because then I have some kind of hope in this project rather than, because some of my, you know, role models let me down when you meet them too. So. Yeah, yeah. Like, wow, same, I, I, same. I never thought he'd be like this. Now I don't yeah. even like his catalog, you know. Um, yeah, Ashley. And you know what? I should have fixed that question. What is your most fulfilling collaboration thus far? <laughs> okay, because, you know, there's some things coming up for all of us. Uh, but, yeah. Um, I mean, it might sound a little cheesy, but I, I feel like um, it's fulfilling to work with my best friends. Like, I... Uh. Um, oh. I know. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, I share the equator business with my now husband mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. aja is a i guess like creative baby with my best friend so like i think um obviously like we've worked on really really cool projects and you know done collaborations with great brands but you know clients come and go right. and i am grateful every time you know a brand i think our biggest our first like commercial client that we were super excited about at Equator was Nike, you know, it was like, oh, okay, like we're properly doing commercial work now. Um, but, and I've been able to work with so many of like my like design community, uh, uh, creative collaborators that I'm really excited about, but if I have to name anyone, it's Anthony Prince Leslie, my husband, um, and Moya Anise, my design partner. Those are my most fulfilling collaborations. I love just that. Us having these businesses together. I love yeah. that. Um, that's amazing. Yeah, like love wins. Um, okay, so this is my final question um, for everybody. A um, hundred years from now, what do you want people to write about your work? Yeah, I'm going there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, let's start with you, show me. I mean, that's always tough because my mindset's changed a lot as far as uh, being in this creative industry. It used to be like 80% of my life was like dedicated to this creative industry, and then I realized you gotta have balance, right? So I think, and now you know, I have a ten year, a ten month old daughter now. Congratulations! Um, that's the most fulfilling thing for me now. Um, but you know, I think I pride myself in like being able to put on like younger talent, you know, giving everybody a chance and planting those seeds. So like, you know, when I had that opportunity to put on like other minority talent, I did my best to like pass that baton, you know, pass that torch. So hopefully years from now, we can look back at it and be like, all right, you know, he's also helped like, like I don't want to take credit for it. It could be talked about like within the family circle, mm -hmm. but like, you know, we, we helped establish a lot of talent and that's, that's what makes me happy because I'm just like, you know, you gotta like, you know, pay it forward and then leave with a legacy or where it wasn't just about you. I feel like a lot of, artists live for themselves. Whereas for me, it's just like, I wanna leave an impact with the community. And I think that comes with putting them on as well, you know, passing the plug. Your friend Pharrell said, your legacy is not what you did, but how many people you put on. I actually uh, like really- I didn't think about that. Yeah. And Love ironically, <laughs> you know, here's the thing with Pharrell, like, yeah, knowing, let's go there. Knowing, yeah, let's go no, there. No, no, no. Okay, so I've known him since 2004, and it was always weird because I'm the biggest fan at the same time, right? And it's not like he's one of those guys that I got to see every day, right? I, we ha like Pusha, yes, we'd see each other every day because we had a studio in Virginia. We, we see them every day. Uh, Pharrell was like our father, you know? He's like the wizard behind the curtain. Every once in a while he pops up and he's like, oh shit, like, you know? And he still would, if he could help, he would help. So even though, like I said, I've, I've, I've worked for his label so many you know, different projects, but he never forgets you know, anyone. So like when, he, when I was first moving to New York, I needed a, um, uh, what is that called? I'm like blanking. What is that called? Huh? Reference. You know, Pharrell took the time Man, out, brothers. texted the CEO, Greg. He texted Greg and was like, yeah, he's a good dude. Like, look out for him. And then when I moved on to the fader, he didn't have to do it again. You know, this is like post Pharrell happy. You can get, get, can't get in touch with the, Pharrell and still did it, you know? Like, um, so like, 
what you, what you said. It's just like, how many people did you put on? Like, it's it's really important. Like, uh, I personally, I, I I do like the feeling of being able to give, and I get something out of that. You know, I don't know. It just makes me feel great because I know what that feeling is like when somebody else does that for you. And for me, it felt really special coming out of Virginia Beach. There's a handful of kids that were in that industry, and so you know, us getting to work with Timbaland and Pharrell, two monsters from our area, like, and for them to be able to put so many people on, like, it inspired me. I said, look, that guy created an entire economy for not just the city, for the world. Like, he's created outlets that would have never existed, you know? And so that's why I congrats to him on the LV situation. I'm like, so stoked about that. Very well deserved. Yeah, I just want to say um, before we move on to y'all answers that um, Show Me has also put me on. I have held a Which light nice. in numerous music videos <laughs> like this. Um, Show Me has put me on in so many ways. So yeah, I get that and I think that's fab. And you're saying that it's kind of the same thing for you. You agree? Yeah, what else are you doing anything for? Right. I, I just feel like um, I'm not working this hard you know, just to make a dollar. I think that that's a, a nice perk and it's a good part of it, you know, when you are allowed to work on projects that are lucrative and you can put beautiful things out in the world, but at the end of the day, uh, what any, uh, uh, at least for me, like anything that we're doing, whether it's on my brand side or on um, the equator production side, it's about creating space and, you know, for me, like I come from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, a little black girl, first black family in my family when I moved there. The girl next door had never met a black girl before, you know, and it's just like silly because I'm not that old. <laughs> um, but, you know, like creative career paths didn't really exist in my family. I didn't have examples. And so really kind of went into um, pursuing a creative career blind. And I just want to be able to create opportunities for more you know, people like me who are interested in exploring the possibilities of what they can do, whether it's, you know, having new somebody get into production and come, you know, to like an educational session at Equator Studios and learn about what it means to be a PA. Or if it's, you know, giving educational a, sessions over there? We will that? be soon. Oh, word. Okay. <laughs> nice. We will be soon. Um, we just opened up a studio in Industry City. It's yes, called Equator love Studio. That. And, um, We'll be working on some programming coming up, but you know the programming will be centered around education for folks who are interested in getting into the production space. But um, yeah, I, I think I, it's just about making space and and creating opportunities for people to not only just explore creative, we but make money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know that's right. Let's bring the bag to everybody. Yeah, we all you know need the bag. Saying? Who deserves it? You know what I'm saying? Because there's some um, cash. <laughs> the way I look at it the art is always gonna last longer than the person. So mm -hmm. even when I'm gone, everyone doesn't need to know that I made that song. As long as they enjoy it, they love that song, I think my job was done. Wow, yeah. At the end of the day, because I've made songs, no one knows I produced that song. We're not like super known producers at the same time, even though we've done like a few big songs and stuff like that. But long as someone knows it, they enjoy it, that's what it's about. Like art's supposed to be shared, it's not necessarily about me at the, at the end of the day. If I can make good music and put it out, then my job is done. Work, tour it. Um, thank you guys so much for chatting with me. Y'all know I talk a lot, so we did really well. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, shout out to Creatively and Cultured. Okay. Shout out to Kyle, yes. Love you, girl. You ate that Miss Hawker Day. Um, okay. Yeah. Ooh, that would be fun. I'm going to walk my mic over. You mind? Yeah, I'm walking my mic over. <laughs> Hi, how are you? What's your question? Uh, my question is, what are you most proud of or what are you looking forward to from the next generation? I mean, I think I'm most proud of the fearlessness of like the younger generation. Um, I think with the internet, like the world is truly your oyster, and I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm just really proud to see so much fearlessness and people really going after what they want. 
uh, yeah, I'm excited that there's so many now black and brown creatives in the space finally, like they're finally letting us, you know, present, you know, like tell our stories, like our stories are finally being heard. So I, I can't wait to hear now stories that's not about the identity anymore because we've had to do that. Now, like, hey, we're humans and we go through all this and this is through our, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be about the struggle anymore. Like, that's what I want to see in the future. You know, like, we've had to struggle, fight for these positions, and I hope the future doesn't have to do that, you know? That's what I'm excited to see, just create art. I'm not getting up for the next question, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, you got the, you got it. Great question. I think that was actually in here. I was supposed to, so. I think, I think my dreams evolve, um, but. Ooh, great answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh man, I don't know. I don't know who my dream client is. I feel like it'll change, but I really love Oprah. Yeah, I could see her. <laughs> Yeah, on the beach. I don't know if I really if I want to work with her or if I just want to have lunch with her. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Speaking of lunch, Jay Z. <laughs> I came so close to working. I mean, we work with Beyonce, obviously. Gito knows that. But like, Jay is like the reason we do this. And so like, we were so close to working with Jay Z one time. I mean, we've worked for Rock Nation and things like that. But Jay is like the holy grail for us. Uh, me and my brother. I'm just speaking. <laughs> me and my brother. Um, uh, but, you know, high school, I dreamed of working with Wu-Tang and we got to do their documentary. So some dreams are fulfilled and some dreams are still out there. Oh, I've got one. Yeah. And maybe you can help with this. Okay. It's Pharrell Williams. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's collab. Let's creatively collab, shouldn't we? Let's make that happen. There you go. How you feel, Kyle? All right, thank you guys so much. That was so fun. Thank I you. like my drink strong. Um, <laughs> DJ, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my, oh. oh, sorry. Excuse me, Tash never gave his dream. I'm sorry, oh. because Show Me spoke on your behalf. I'm, That's why. I'm brothers. I'm a big car fanatic, so probably like Mercedes Benz or something. Oh, Mercedes, if you're listening. You did Volvo. You did Volvo. That came close. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Give me you.